seventeen and all your dreams are knocking on your front door. I'm coming to you in the most vulnerable state of my life ever. Twenty-five, you realize that nothing is the same as before. I struggle with that boundary and I do struggle with saying no. Where did we go? Where did we go? Where did we go? All of those years. My kids deserve their mom sober and alive. How did we end up? How did we end up? How did we end up here? I am done. I am okay being by myself. Is it all, all, all a lie? Hi, beautiful people. I'm Rachel Severs, and you're listening to Consent to Treat. Beautiful people, I'm Rachel Severs, and you are listening to Consent to Treat's Just the Tip, a condensed version of Thursday's episode. If you like things short and sweet, this Just the Tip episode is for you. If you want to hear the full uncut session and all the commentary and tips, come back Thursday and we'll have that for you. Today, we are listening to a real-life counseling session between me and John, a 31-year-old male born in the Philippines who moved to the United States when he was in middle school. He comes from an extremely rigid, hyper-Catholic Navy background. In his most natural state, John is all energy, vibration, guided by the higher power, spiritually tuned in. But family expectations, cultural norms, and roles like being the eldest, being male, being a Navy mechanic, being the fun party guy, have kept him from reaching his highest potential. This season, we watch John shed off roles and take a huge step toward his highest and best. John doesn't use his session time to work on things like relationship or communication issues. John thinks big. He uses his time in session to contemplate ideas, ponder the universe, wonder about himself. He can clearly see his connection to the earth, others, all things, and this makes him incredibly unique. Now, if only he could see that. For the sake of his privacy, we are keeping John's real name and identifying information hidden. He has given us permission to record and publish this session. Please be aware, sessions with me always include mature language. All right. And with that, hate it, love it, learn something. Enjoy. So you said you were at the mall before you came here? Yeah, I was at the mall looking for suits. Suits? And, for what? Just um, for everyday life or? We have uh, we have something going on at my lodge on Saturday. So we have to be like, it's a black tie event. It's very cool. Ooh, did I you know. find one that you like? No, none of them are to my liking at all. Mm. Because, oh, I found something out. What? I've gotten really like tight with my money really since when i guess you know when that face of time where i was living without a job yeah yeah i was like i don't like buying stuff anymore the only thing i like buying is things i need mm -hmm. which is weird because i've never been really frugal that way and i've looked at frugal people with like a shade of this day like what do you like live your life yeah yeah i like different things now it's cool i used to have full closets to the point where i couldn't walk in them because you had so many clothes so and shoes much, and stuff, really? So much stupid stuff in there. So what's your closet look like these days? It has an incubator in it, and I'm currently incubating 44 eggs. You're incubating chicken eggs in your closet? Yes. I don't care who, who says something about it, you know? Like, uh -huh. It's not just some project. I'm really banking on this eggs to become chickens. I love it, even though it's 21 days of me just looking at them at least 20 <laughs> minutes every night. I'm like... <laughs> Can't you, wait to see you. Have you named them? To be honest with you, I probably will. I just haven't gotten to that point. You have of... to see their their little beaked faces before mm -hmm. you'll know who they are. Yes. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> what are we talking about? Um... We're talking about your chickens. No, but th I think this is important. Okay. There's this interesting calm that happens. And I'm not quite sure what that is. But I think that human beings belong in connection with that circle of life or we're supposed to be connected with the natural growth that happens because it's naturally happening with us at all times right that that natural just growth and rebirth constantly because i see that's kind of what you're doing with your chicks right you're just like paying close attention to them and watching every moment of it and a lot of people have told me that 
especially the older ones. Mm -hmm. Like this is my adult playtime where I don't worry about what anybody thinks. I don't worry about trivial matters. I'm not worried about politics, religion, where I'm going to go when I pass. It's just me and my chickens, which is cool. Yeah. I feel like a Pokemon trainer. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, this yeah. is it. This might just be a part of my journey in life, but that's one thing that I do enjoy so much. It's taking yourself to the most simple form. Yes. The most simple thing. But it's also taking you to the most magnificent, miraculous, huge experience there is, which is nature propelling itself forward all on its own. Yes. And it continues to do so with or without us. Without and us. we're a part of that. And we're a part of that. Like growth is a funny thing. Side note, I huh. quit on Christmas Eve. <laughs> oh boy. What was that like? It was again that that feeling of like my family's at home on Christmas Eve and I'm eating a dollar fifty hot dog for my first fifteen. And my family has literally sent me a picture of the feast they have prepared for our mm. Christmas dinner. Easy choice. Very easy choice. Maybe, uh, at least for me. I was like, the the motto of yeah. this year is, you know, like, fail fast. You know, let's fail fast and just keep failing until we don't. We're not failing anymore. And it's beautiful. I was like, on my lunchtime, I was like, excuse me, ma'am, how will I be able to resign? She's like, oh, just write it down on a note. I was like, okay, perfect. So I was like, blank, I, my name, is requesting to resign effective immediately, date, time, employee ID, sign. I was like, thank you very much. I've had such a great time working here. You did not. Yes, I did. Oh my God. I did. That is so cool. It is. <laughs> it's like a... <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you didn't fucking lead with that. Wow. Wow. That's like movie stuff. I was like, I love this whole idea of working and just to work and blah, 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 this and that. And I'm like, I love the idea. Don't get me wrong. But there's better things somewhere. It's There's got to be better things somewhere. Mm. And leave it up to God. <laughs> and I was like, it's <laughs> Jesus' birthday, dude. <laughs> we went to church at midnight together as a family uh -huh. came home me and my pops drank i gave my little sister a bunch of stuff it was like a, a hallmark movie yeah and i don't have a more memorable christmas even in my childhood for us together as a family yeah we were always we were always separated were they so surprised to see you show up no i haven't i don't have the heart to tell my parents that i just quit the job <laughs> <laughs> they think that it keeps me they, that job is keeping me afloat on my mental health and i really don't have i was like it was <laughs> i got out early or something i got out early i was like oh they were like cutting people off it's christmas eve so let's have fun gotcha you know okay there are some things that i just can't tell my parents like right then and there yeah I'm practicing it but yeah i so you created the most beautiful memory for yourself oh yeah a hundred percent. It's like a movie. Mm -hmm. I was racing home. I love that you're just like listening and acting on it. You yes. know, listening to yourself, acting on it, listening to yourself, acting on it. And you're really good at listening to yourself. You know, you know, you know what's going on, but you're not always so good at taking the step that you know you need to take. Oh yeah. You know, terrible. You talk yourself out of it or, yeah. you know, talk yourself into shit that you don't really want to be doing but i think you're just getting like better and better at doing exactly what is right for you yeah you know this the christian church teaches you to suffer oh yeah things aren't supposed to be easy they're supposed to be hard yeah and the more you suffer the better of a human you are it is really ingrained in us that things are supposed to be hard yeah that if you're miserable that's normal that's even good sometimes, yeah. you know? So people allow themselves to stay in these places that are miserable thinking that they're doing good yeah. or they're doing the right thing or they're being strong. But really we are built that when we feel peace and contentedness, we're actually exactly where we're supposed to be to reach our maximum potential, you know? So where you aren't lately, but a lot of us are denying what 
our internal navigation system is telling us yeah. because we believe we're supposed to suffer. But what I love about what you're doing is you're listening to it. You believe it. Yeah. Trust it. You're doing what it's telling you to do. Yeah. It will keep taking you to the right place. And I love it. It's just still odd to me that I, I'm even a part of this. Like I'm even talking to you. Like it's, it's something clicks in me. Like, dude, you are not in your car anymore. And the safe of the safety of your own car, pausing a podcast and then telling it <laughs> your point of view also, like you're a part of it. You're actually in the one. So maybe don't tell her everything mm -hmm. or else everybody will know. Yeah. That's silly. See, silly voices. <laughs> but I mean, that it makes sense that that must, when that thought comes to you, that must feel very vulnerable. It does. Because right here, I think you and me, you, you understand yeah. you're safe, you're good, everything, yeah. you know. It's just that that thought then takes you to that place of, <gasps> I'm <Yeah>. not safe. <laughs> People might know People me. People might know. It's, it's very scary. Well. But like, like a cockroach flying scary, not like a... Pterodactyl. Mexican cartel hunting you down, oh, scary. Yeah, that's, two very that's different. Way more things. scarier than a pterodactyl. Oh wow! I, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I get that, and and I just want to honor the fact that there was probably a time, and there might even still be times, like telling your parents that you just quit your job, that it actually feels Mexican cartel scary. Maybe earlier in your life, being your true self felt more Mexican cartel scary. Oh yeah. But today being your true self more often than not feels like flying cockroach scary. Yeah. So I just want to point that out that there there's tremendous growth there. You know? Yeah, and so. the fact that you 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 see it right away, you feel it, you're like, ah, you even have kind of a smile on your face and you're like, oh yeah, I'm being vulnerable and I can feel it in my body and it's doing this thing to my back and and then it kind of passes. That's <laughs> that's way tolerable. Like if that's all I have to experience to like speak up and be my true self. Okay. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. <laughs> and each time it'll get less and less and less until it's like, I don't know, fire ant. Yeah. And then maybe like, someday it's just like a horse fly. Yeah. Fully integrated. And yeah. you're just like that all the time. Oh, how amazing. <laughs> right. You've done really good work. Thank you're you. Really beautiful to watch and be a part of your journey. I honestly think that this has been one of the best tools and met with support and if not support, just like a constructive way to, to be more human, you know? Yeah. More and more every time until it becomes natural. Yeah. A part of you. Yeah. Completely. <laughs> Thank you for spending your evening with me. I appreciate you. Thank you. Anything else for today? I'm good? Good. All right. We are kind of John fangirls. I believe it's because he will put his most vulnerable feelings out there. And you can tell he's like scared about it sometimes. And it is not easy for him. But in just a normal conversation... He'll be talking about how he kicked ass at work or he like did a great job. And and then he'll stop and he'll be like, but don't get me wrong. I was like shaking the entire time. He's so transparent with those super vulnerable experiences. Can I relate? I, I really can. And I went about it very different in my life. I was told in so many ways that I was highly impulsive. I don't think things through. I'm irresponsible. I don't push through difficult times when I should. And I believed that about myself because I believed what people told me about me. The reality is, is I've always been quite good at listening to my gut and not settling for anything other than that. When my gut tells me to go, I go. When there's a fire and I, I want to do something, I just do it. And I think what what I'm relating to with John is like, I want to leave my job. So I do. It's not working for me anymore. I, I want to go spend my time with the chicken on my shoulder and be a Pokemon trainer. I'm good. I'm going to go do that because it feels really good. It's really looked down on, right? People really criticize following your gut. They don't like it. We've seen him over the last year or two 
come in and out of, you know, I, I want to buy a house. So now I'm going to do that. I, I want to go to school and I'm dropping out of school and I want to try to get a job. So I'm putting out resumes or I want to read 25 books this year. So I'm going to start doing that. And then none of it has been quite right for him. So it hasn't lasted. There are so many shoulds on us. <laughs> it's just wild. Even though on our earth, in the systems that we have established, we need people at every single station. So why any authority would want to lock their child into some sort of plan or, you know, it must look like this at this time, you know, and it must be done this way. I I'm not quite sure why. Anyways, that's how I relate. I think it's pretty significant to talk about suffering being holy or good. How strange is it that we are taught to feel stronger, better, holier, purer if we have suffered through something? The job was terrible, but I stuck with it for five years because I'm loyal, because I am a good employee. I'm miserable. My partner's abusive, but I stayed with it. 25 years I suffered. Wow. I'm a little confused about the whole thing. I mean, is that passed down from the systems? Like we want to keep people in their places. So we're going to tell them that you're miserable, but you are now anointed because you have been so miserable for so long. You know, you're going to get blessed now. Just stay where you're at. Overall, we're, we're meant to, you know, kind of have a good time here. And that's really looked down on. The general population looks at us and they're like, ugh, gosh, what's wrong with you? Life is supposed to be joyful. Ugh. And we've gotten feedback from some people, listeners, that they almost have a, uh, I don't even know what the right word would be. Their, their initial response to John is like, ugh, get a job. Ugh, pay your bills. What's wrong with you? Why are you just loafing around, enjoying life? Isn't that interesting? It's like, is the idea that if I am joyful and I love my life and I find pleasure in most moments of my life, that I won't be a contributing member of society? Is that the concern? This brings me to another really important point. What's really beautiful about John right now is that He's listening to that calling in him. He's listening to what feels good and he's doing it. Even though people around him might look down on him or might think that what he's doing is crazy or whatever, he's going where it feels good. And I guarantee at some point, if he continues really being where he feels good, where he feels right, where he's centered, where he's at his best, it will start making him money. <laughs> that he can then pay his bills and give it to other people or hire other people. And then they can start making money. Like it, then, then the money will start flowing. Maybe it'll be a lot. Maybe it'll be a little, I don't know. I'm not God, but I believe that. My tip for the day comes from John. John gave us the most amazing visual. Is this a flying cockroach moment or is this a Mexican cartel moment? imagine a flying cockroach bloop, like flies in front of your face and it's like bop, 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 and like kind of batting around and you can't find it and ah, it's, a, it's a flying cockroach and just kind of notice what your body feels like and realize that that's kind of what your body feels like when you're in an uncomfortable like conversation or when you're about to set a boundary with someone or someone kind of pisses you off a little bit like oh your body feels that fear sensation now Imagine you took a road trip to Mexico and five trucks surrounded you and you have people with guns pulling you out of your car and putting you in the back of trucks, okay? Now imagine what your body feels like. Very, very, very different, right? Whole nother level. You might be numb. You might be dissociative. You might be tingling all over. This is an entirely different level of fear, right? This is a Mexican cartel moment. I absolutely love that John put visuals to how our bodies feel in scary, but definitely tolerable moments. I can do this. Flying cockroach. Yeah. Is it a little uncomfy, but I can deal with it. I can catch it, throw it out. I can go in a different room, whatever. I can have this difficult conversation. I can set a boundary with this person. I can do whatever this little scary flying cockroach thing is. Mexican cartel moments. 
those are the big daddies, okay? That's when we need to call in our resources, maybe call our counselor, our therapist, call in our spouse if they're safe, call our friends, get people surrounded, take really good care of yourself. This is a situation that needs more attention. Sometimes we get them confused. Our body is having a flying cockroach moment, but we're interpreting it as a Mexican cartel moment. It's not that big. You actually can do it. Just because you feel a little bit going on in your body doesn't mean it's a Mexican cartel moment. I'm encouraging everyone to pay close attention to how your body responds in scary situations and really ask yourself, can I tolerate this? Can I do this? Can I be with this? Because I'm guessing most of the time, the answer is going to be yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do this. I can feel a little bit afraid and I can still get through this. Too many times we let fear stop us because we think it's worse than it actually is. We are actually able to tolerate fear much better than we give ourselves credit for. I love that John gave us that cool visual to work with. Try it out and see if that helps. This has been Consent to Treat. From Rachel Seavers and Elodie. (laughs) Thank you for listening and supporting beautiful people. Goodbye. Goodbye.